I mean, certainly, folks, if you're watching and you want to start a business, if you're, if you're, business, if you're biz curious uh, here in Portugal, um, then certainly ask questions about how to go about doing that to, with Raquel here. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to have to close WhatsApp and open it up again because there's something I want to share with you. Uh, yesterday evening, um, as part of the Portugal Club that we do on a Tuesday night, uh, we began or we re reopened the conversation about the expat angels, which is a working title, it has to be said. It might not be called that in, in the long term. Um, but the idea, lo a long time ago, actually, um, was to look at um, uh, helping young Portuguese entrepreneurs um, with, you know, there's, 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 there, there's a, there are interesting things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that people find out when they come and work with Portuguese companies. It's a different way of doing business. And there's this great startup scene, and there are a lot of youngsters as well who who want to do things a little bit differently. You know, they're inspired, I think, by some of the the American ideas of startup culture, and and you yeah. see some very exciting things happening uh, with that. So we thought uh, um, some time ago that we would we would start this expat angels idea to bring together. Um, not only the capital and funding of, of some uh, foreigners who are coming over who see some great ideas here and want to invest in those companies, um, but also the experience and acumen. If you imagine you've got a young Portuguese entrepreneur starting out in their career with some really exciting ideas. And then we've also got uh, perhaps a, um, a, a retiree coming to Portugal who's been working in co the corporate world or is an entrepreneur themselves. They're thinking they're going to retire. But those sorts of people, I think, never retire. They, they, they're like you. They can't switch their minds off, can they? They see things and they go, that could be done a bit differently. That's a really good commercial opportunity. There's a really good business. That person could do so much better if they just knew about that, which they don't necessarily because they're young, they're idealistic, they're focused on their creativity, and they're not doing the nuts and bolts bits, which you're so good at. So we had a conversation last night, expat angels, helping young Portuguese entrepreneurs. We're up and running. Anybody who might be interested in that, just, just reach out and get in touch. And I'm hoping, Raquel, um, they will use your services um, because this is this is the the um, perhaps the um, the t the harder part, isn't it? It's the the pragmatic yeah. practicalities of running a business. Your entrepreneurs are all about, yeah, let's get excited about it. Let's go do pitches, and they haven't necessarily got their eyes dotted and their t's crossed. Sorry, that was a really long spiel for expat angels. But what do you make of that and the, and the scene here? Yeah. Exactly that, and I see. Uh, I mean, even like last week, I think it was a uh, it was a friend of mine, my greatest friend actually. I just had a talk with him and and uh, his other partner because they were they had some ideas uh, on a company that they wanted to to create, and we went through so many concepts and so many ideas because there is a lot of when you're a business owner a lot of this you already know but when when you're starting out you don't know what you don't know yeah. and in reality it's not that it's rocket science but sometimes it's very good to just have like yesterday i was explaining what the difference between an invoice a receipt and an invoice receipt because these are three different documents and people have no clue and of course they don't they don't have any clue about what these documents are and what are the differences between them and so to enable and to uh, give these tools to people and and then they can do their own thing but then they're armed with knowledge and tools to you know to really know what they're doing and to make the better choices so i think this is fundamental i think a lot of people ask me oh, i can open a company you know my accountant probably can open a company a solicitor can open a company that's all, of course every everybody can do. I mean, I can cook a meal. Is it going to be the best meal? No, because there's chefs that do that work much better than I do. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you don't pay to eat my food, but you will pay to to eat their food. So it's similar. It's a question of service and a question of information and knowledge. And again, I always stress this: to have the best professionals by your side. Yeah. Uh, because there's so many things like it's not only the uh, creating the companies then okay now you need insurances and where where the hell am i going to get insurance now maybe you can apply to eu grants how do i go about this and with m what i try to do in my companies is really have a 360 so anybody that comes up to me i know that i have all of these solutions that i can offer that 
very few people have this 360 uh, uh, knowledge and, and openness to, to a business. So I think this is the, the added value that, 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 that I try to bring to the table. It's not just creating a company, it's not, knowing, not just knowing the type of company, is everything is empower people with the best tools so they can thrive in their own businesses well said and wealthy people uh, successful business people know this don't they and i think it's yeah. especially the case the reason I, I i was delighted to write about you in the portugal resident is because i've had experiences of not using the best professionals or not using people at all and it costs yeah. you in the end it costs yeah. you money it costs you in fines potentially um, because the gov the government take a very dim view of you not meeting yeah. your responsibilities <laughs> not complaining about that that's just how it is um and then if you, if you look at it from the other side of the, of, of the equation if you have in, employed uh, and uh, utilized uh, good professionals if the, the the value they add they will actually pay for uh, the, or their services will get paid for in your increased profitability if oh, if this completely. is going well that that's a really good marker to bear in mind and that said it is a big leap to go from being a sort of, uh, you know, one man brand, self-employed person trying to do it all yourself and having that stretch of bigger overheads and and growing up into collaboration with people and working in, in, in a team based way is a big stretch. But I, I can't think of any substitute for it, Raquel. You can't you can't kind of you can't shrink your way to greatness. I think, you know, one of these business gurus said. You, you can't cut corners with these things, can you? Because it will cost you in the end. I don't know a, a way around it. No, and uh, and the way uh, it, it's not, it's like a learning curve. Yeah. If it's too steep, it won't be steady. Uh, it won't have a solid foundation. So, uh, and, and, you know, there's all of those sayings of business saying you can go faster if you go alone, or you can go farther if you go with with the team yes Th there's all of that and that is true and i uh, and that is why i don't pretend to know that i know everything no one does what i do know is that whatever i do and that's why i didn't want to specialize in a lot of things because i don't think that's even possible yeah. but what i don't what i cannot deliver the directly i've found the greatest partners to do that so i don't have to waste time like thinking about insurances or whatever, or thinking about EU grants, because now I have partners that can do that. And so this is, you know, cada macaco no seu galho, as we say in Portugal, which is uh, every monkey in its own uh, <laughs> bean. Uh, everybody has their place and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do the best at what I know I'm the best at, but what I'm not, I find someone that is, that can bring that knowledge and and assistance to my assistance to my client. Collaboration yeah. is key. Yep, I, and and I heard a wonderful story uh, yesterday about a um, this 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 is this is the possibility I think of of a new business approach in Portugal. There is a culture all over the world I think of of um, what you might call tax avoidance or gaming the system. And that is the general, you know, no one likes paying tax to that. I mean, there's, there's a few exceptions, aren't there, who can virtue signal around it. Um, but ultimately, if you, if you didn't have to, if we could structure society in a different way, we probably might. <laughs> so leaving that to one side, it, it is a fact of life that you have to pay your taxes. And cultures emerge about that, don't they, of like begrudging, um, avoidant uh, types of mindsets. And I heard of, 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 of an entrepreneur in this country who said, like, okay, enough of this. this. I don't want to live my life with this avoidance mindset um, of gaming the system. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know, I want to know exactly what I am going to pay, what I expect to pay. I want to pay it, and I'm going to build it into my costs. Um, and there, they did that, and they explained it, I believe, to their, to their clients that, you know, this is our approach to taxation. We think it's good. We, we think it's the right thing to do. It's something we don't want to avoid or play games with. We're going to be transparent about it. And they have um, increased, the, I don't know, I can't remember if it was their turnover or their profit, but they increased, they had a plus over 25% increase, uh, a positive increase in their business. 
Now, that's what's possible, isn't it? When you grasp these sorts of nettles, if you stop avoiding things, um, and, you know, I'm a fine one to talk because it's exactly how I've operated. I've avoided things. I've been incompetent. But if you can, with the help of other people, and this applies to all of life, doesn't it? It's not just business. It's everything. If you can, if you can address the truth of the situation and get help uh, and then kiss the frogs, take the medicine, whatever analogy you use, and follow those steps, you know, you begin to know what you're doing and you can build that in, can't you, to the cost, to how you operate, to how you are as a person, to how you are as a business. And these are the sorts of business, businesses and people we might see in the future if we do that. Yeah. I mean, there's there's one thing that I like to point out is that I haven't I haven't met any expat that wanted to create a company or that's here that's told me to my face, I do not want to pay taxes. Mm. completely the opposite everybody yeah. that that is coming here is being very adamant to the fact that you know i want to put my weight uh, my own weight i want to pay my taxes i want to hire people and pay social security and pay what so yeah. first of all everybody that's coming here uh i i see that attitude which is great and second of all i mean i had a friend that that was in the united states recently and she said Man, I want to be here because we hardly pay any taxes. I mean, IRS, it's like 12 or 15 or whatever it is. And in Portugal, I feel like 45 or whatever. Uh, and, you know, there's uh, and VAT is much less. Everything is much less. And I was like, yeah, that's all correct. That's all fine and dandy. But the, 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 the amount of money that you have to put just for health insurance is absolutely absurd. And I take give I always give my examples. I mean, I was taught in the public system school. My oldest was taught in the public system school. She's now in the third year of chemical engineer, so she's not dumb. She's you know she she was great. I don't think I I I, I was uh, uh, hurt in any way for being in the Portuguese uh, teaching system. Quite the contrary, it's much. Uh, contrary to what people believe, the Portuguese teaching system is very, very demanding. When you put face-to-face -face, uh, private sector and international schooling, uh, especially in the higher, like the high school uh, demands and the public system, there's no, there's no two way about it. And and I keep talking about, keep talking to people that have schools, and they know this. So we have that. We have public health. I mean, I didn't pay anything to have my, my two, uh, my two uh, younger children. I know that I'm safe. I know that I have all sorts of things and all sorts of social protections in place. So it's always a trade off. And what I don't think it's fair is, okay, now I'm here and I know that I can go to the hospital and be taken care of. And I know that I have all this and that, and then don't have in mind that that comes with the price of paying taxes so you know it's whatever system either you pay less taxes and have, have less things or you pay more taxes and have more things i mean you you can't it's like you said there's no other way that civilization can be organized up until now you know so we well we might continue to debate that but i do take your point roughly speaking i mean yeah that would appear to be the way of these of these western liberal democracies yeah. such as we have them at the moment right um, and, yeah. and you make a good case, don't you, uh, comparing um, a, a very low tax uh, scenario where there are a lot of costs elsewhere um, yeah. with, with a more with a, with a system that we see in, in Portugal. It's, it's, it's a great conversation to be having. And practically, pragmatically, if you want to get on here, I think you have to bite a bullet and engage in the system. Now, that, on the one hand, that is that I take the same view as a lot of the clients you're talking about. Um, However, I have been wearied by that process. Wanting to do the right thing um, is is somewhat different to being able to do the right thing, <laughs> because I, yeah. I've become quite frustrated and um, um, partly, and I have to say, partly because of my own incompetence and, and lack of skills in this department. But I have become quite uh, despondent at times of wanting to to. It's the, it's, the, it's the worst part of my life here, and that is it's all relative, of course. It is the most challenging and difficult part of my life here. And I own that because I am responsible for that. I'm not blaming Portugal for that or the government. Um, but it is the most challenging thing for me because of how I am and because of the how it is as a combination. And that's the sort of that's where what we've been talking about, isn't it? Is like you know, so what do you do faced with the idea that you do want to be 
a um, a responsibility meeting, a responsible tax paying citizen running your business in the most elegant way and making shit loads of money as well. How do you go about doing that? And as you said, it's a bit overwhelming for some people. I think it's a bit overwhelming for most people. And you need a team approach. So we came up with the idea, didn't we, that you know this needs to be broken down for the, for people like me, babies in this situation, into baby steps. Yeah. So very kindly, Raquel, not only have you created a resource for us that is the beginner's <laughs> guide to starting a business, all the information um, that people need, you have published. And now you're going a step further, I think, to help you know the the kind of business for dummies people like me who need because <laughs> i mean it is it, it must be infuriating for you and, and accountants and people when they go hold on a minute am i having to explain to this person the difference between a receipt a receipt an invoice and a receipt invoice it's like yes you are sorry and and and, and that might have come as a shock to you but would you agree it's needed the baby step breakdown is needed for people who are gifted, creative, and want to start a business, but are just going to get themselves into so much trouble if they don't get the basics Absolutely. right. Absolutely. And uh, I never want to, let's say, tarnish the minds of such creative people with mundane details. So, <laughs> what I because again, it's like uh, I don't necessarily have to know what, you know, what. Uh, creative people do and uh, and uh, like copy and writing I, I i'm not the best at that and those entrepreneurs those people shouldn't be bothered with all of those details what i do think is that they have to have people on their side yeah. they have to have people that can explain things and i always say if you can explain it to a four-year-old you know your business because when you don't know how to break things to a very simple state and form to explain to people, then you don't know what you're talking about. And I found that 70 to 80% of people do not have a clue what they're talking about in any organization, in any company, in any way, in any sorts of walks of life. People yeah. don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and they never like to to let people know that they really don't know what they're doing. So the best thing is ask questions and ask very basic questions because sometimes people are like, and you said, you know, it's companies for dummies. No, it's not. It's not a question of being a, a, or a dummy or whatever. It's not, people are not incompetent. Uh, people have uh, their, you know, and today we have to know so much about so many things. We have so many you know, attention grabbers, uh, points in our lives. We don't have to know everything about everything. I do think, and I do feel that we need to know the basics just to, you know, navigate the system. Uh, and what I do really like is to bring stuff down to a very simple stage. Like for instance, I was yesterday again with the client and I was telling her, you know, this is VAT, this is social security, this is IRS and you have to know the difference between these three very well because otherwise uh, and she was somebody had helped or had tried to help her in the past with uh, she had opened the activity and she was like ah oh. but then I saw uh, retention something for the VAT and I was like hmm, no you're you know this is all mixed up in your head these are concepts that are very sometimes are very complicated, but they can be broken down to simpler things. You don't need to know every detail about this, but you do just need to know the mechanism. And once you know the mechanism, you know, you'll have your accountant to, to talk to, to speak with, or you can have a consultant, a business professional by your side to, you know, to, to uh, get, you know, into more details. You don't need to know everything. But you do need to know the simpler things, and it's not there's not a lot of people that can break down stuff into simpler uh, pieces. Well, thank goodness you're doing that, and I think that's part of the change in the business world generally. You could argue, couldn't you, that some professionals have obscured what they do so they stay in business. Well, I don't. Think, I don't think there's any need to do that, is there? I mean, not everyone's going to become a doctor just because doctors tell. I mean, the better doctors tell people what they're doing, don't they, rather than hide behind, you know. Don't worry. I've got a stethoscope and a white coat. You just need to trust everything I say. We get, we're moving into a world now, aren't we, where professionals are, I think, credited, um, liked more 
um, uh, uh, subscribe to. You know, you, you are influencing people more when they come from that position of authenticity and professionalism um, rather than playing those sort of old school games of like, uh, this is my secret world and you can only have access to it if you pay me. There's no need for that anymore, is there? And I think it's especially so in business. So thank goodness you're doing that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a delightful, a delighted recipient um, of, of this, this, this kind of service where it needs to be broken down to, to four-year-old level um, so that... <laughs> It can be understood. And so I can make progress. I mean, the thing is, I don't necessarily need to understand what a surgeon is doing inside my body. Um, I just need to know when I need to turn up and how to prepare for it and then how to deal with it afterwards, post-surgery. It's, it's that, isn't it? It's like we're talking about systems here, aren't we? That's the great thing about these business um, concepts is they are systematic. <laughs> and if someone like you, Raquel, breaks it down for people and turns it into a, a form – uh, literally or metaphorically, then that ha that l lets the, the business person have it as one less problem in their head and they just open up the spreadsheet or enter it, the data into a form and they can do weekly or monthly reporting instead of just having it there as a mess that they just don't want to deal with that ultimately might bring them down. Um, but yeah, because you know, you've got to attend to these things. Raquel, thank you. A fantastic conversation.